Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's public information meeting. My name is Greg Newman. I'm the manager of planning with the City of White Rock, and I'm happy you're able to join us here tonight. Um, I'm going to just jump into the presentation. So tonight we're here to talk about a development variance permit and a liquor license referral application. The property that is the subject of the application is at 1122 Vidal Street. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to inform you, the public, of the intent and details of the proposal, to receive feedback and to address any questions that you may have. Uh, the meeting is a live event. We're using the Microsoft Teams platform uh, the proponent is Galaxy Craft Brewhouse Limited, and we also have uh, Bill Ulrich, uh, the project architect here as well. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. It will be posted on the city's YouTube page uh, after the event. Uh, questions that we get uh, when we get to the question and answer period uh, will not be published if they are um, offensive or otherwise disrespectful, but uh, we will publish um, comments and questions that are offering both support and opposition to the project. Um, I just want you to know that if you're offering comments and questions now or before we get to that, that period, you may not see them appear, but when we get there, I'll make sure that we're, we're publishing all the comments and questions so that you can ensure that your, your feedback is being heard. Um, we do also have, I've, I've got my email there up on the screen. If you wanna offer additional questions or provide comments more formally on the application, uh, you're welcome to provide me an email with those comments. Uh, G Newman at whiterockcity.ca. Also, um, I'll get to it a bit later, but we have a, a digital feedback form on the city's webpage that's specific to this project that we would also ask that you complete. So just for general reference, the, the subject property is at the sort of the lower end of Victoria Avenue on Vidal Street, just sort of south of the West Beach Parkade. The proposal itself is to introduce a uh, craft brewery, so a licensed establishment with a seating capacity of 50, 50 persons, 50 seats. Uh, the property is designated Waterfront Village in our official community plan, and the Waterfront Village in, in sort of envisions a mix of residential and commercial uses on the water in buildings of up to four stories in height. Um, there's no proposed change to the massing of the building in this application. The property is zoned uh, CR3 in the zoning bylaw. Um, the, the reason for this public information meeting is that there's a development variance permit or a DVP that's being sought to allow for four parking spaces where uh, the bylaw would require six. And I think that might be difficult for you to read on the screen, uh, but this, the, the rate of parking that's required for a licensed establishment, so a brewery, is one parking space for every eight seats. Uh, available for customer use, except one for every 16 seats if the lot fronts onto Marine Drive. So in this case, the property does not uh, technically front onto Marine Drive. It's about 25 meters away. Um, if it were on Marine Drive uh, with 50 seats, there would be a need for three parking spaces, whereas, as I mentioned, there's six required in this case. There was a parking assessment provided with the application for the variance. Um, by Creative Transportation Solutions, and that's included with the application, and um, we're happy to get into details regarding that technical work a bit later. So as I mentioned, the project or the subject properties within the Waterfront Village designation, which generally hugs the waterfront. You can see it shown in pink there. The property is highlighted in, in black, where a mix of uh, commercial uh, residential uses are anticipated. And with that brief introduction, I do want to give the floor to the applicants. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Bill Ulrich to present the project.
Thanks, Bill. I think you might be on mute. Okay, am I live now? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, thanks. Okay, great. Thanks, Greg. Uh, so my name is Bill Yurick. I'm a principal at Simsic and Yurick Architects, and we've been working with Doug and Lisa and their family on the development of the Galaxy Craft Brewery. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I have a, a presentation about 15 slides to go through. One is point is to give you guys a little bit of background on Galaxy Brewing, and then the second is to provide a little more background in terms of our parking variants. Um, so maybe I'll just get started. At the end, uh, both Doug and I are available to answer any questions that anyone should have about the project. Okay, um, so this is a picture of Doug and Lisa and their family. Uh, uh, Doug's background, uh, he got into craft brewing uh, a few years ago uh, when his kids uh, were, were growing up. Um, they've lived in White Rock since 1997, so they have a long history in White Rock. Um, it's a, been a dream of Doug and Lisa, I guess, to start a brewery for a while, and they've been looking for different projects around White Rock, um, and they found this, this building a, a few years ago, or a, a, last year. Uh, the main scope of the project is really a, a tenant improvement. So the building was built in 1960. It's a well-loved building. Uh, had uh, lots of different functions in it, most recently a fitness center with a daycare attached to it. Um, the, the changes to it are going to be fairly modest. It's, this is actually more of a nano brewery than a microbrewery. It's quite small in scale. Um, most of the beer is going to be sold through the tasting room. There's very little kind of distribution from the brewery. Uh, the, the main portion of the scope of work is really internal to the project. So there'll be some um, drainage requirements addition for some infrastructure for the manufacturing of the beer, um, some removal of existing walls that were uh, in place for the last use, uh, addition of millwork, seating, a fireplace, uh, those types of elements. And we also are providing a kind of accessibility lift at the front entry right now. The, the steps are, it's four steps up. So to provide access to that, we're providing a lift. Um, there is a new overhead door going in at the back of the project that will be used for uh, deliveries that prim primarily occur in the morning. I'll show you some, some um, a few pictures of the project later on, but uh, the inspiration is really a kind of fun idea. It's of uh, a 1950s um, kind of space theme. Uh, it's given us a lot of really good inspiration for the interior design of the project. So um, at the end of the project, I'll, at the end of the presentation, I'll show you a couple of photographs of what we're proposing. So as um, Greg mentioned, this is the subject property. So we have, it's on the corner of Idell Street and Victoria Avenue. Uh, fairly close by, we have uh, the West Beach Parkade, which was finished a couple of years ago. Um, 187 parking stalls. Uh, Marine Drive, which is the, the main promontory, uh, promontory along um, uh, White Rock uh, Beach. Uh, there's a walkway that moves along through here. A considerable amount of surface parking on the promenade. Um, lots of commercial restaurants available along Marine Drive. And our location is just around the corner. The main access to the brewery would be off of Vidal Street, close to Marine Drive. Service area would be off the back. Um, and the parking would be in this area here, where is the area we're going to be discussing the variants for. Uh, there's another parkade too across from the site, Montecito, um, which has 70 parking stalls attached to it. This is a picture of the existing building as it is now. Um, so we quite like before shots because they make our after shots look great. Um, so the main access is off of the, the, the corner here. Uh, boathouse restaurant in front. There's a little courtyard uh, between the two. Um, looking at this as a landscaped edge. Uh, the existing parking is kind of in the back here, and I'll show you another view of that. So this is looking at the back of the building. Uh, previously, there was some automotive work in here, and there was an overhead door that was in this portion of the project. Uh, that was replaced a number of years ago. This is a fire exit door. Um, there's a a low storage room that's associated with our building and a few windows into the into the main um, space of the building. Uh, air handling unit on top 
And this one photographs kind of shows the existing parking that um, we found when we when we um, accessed the building. There were three stalls um, on the west side, and then four more stalls along um, the back side of the of the project. However, what turns out to be the case is that the the property line actually runs along here, and so there really isn't sufficient space in order to incorporate um, uh, the six stalls that were required by the uh, by the parking bylaw, as Greg had pointed out. And we also had a challenge in terms of access to these stalls. So um, um, here's the the a kind of um, a floor plan for you guys. So as I mentioned. Uh, main access to the to the brewery. We're going to set up a bar as you come in. Uh, interesting kind of uh, tank system that Doug has, has uh, which will be on display as you come in, used behind the bar. Uh, the main kind of manufacturing area is towards the back of the building. There will be a new fire escape uh, out the, to the to the exterior. The tasting room itself will be on um, the main public side off Idell Street. Uh, required to have two washrooms you know, we really see this is kind of a fun room um, and as i mentioned we'll show you a couple of shots of it uh, later on the project uh, one thing i should mention is that this area is um, being reviewed by the city of white rock for some changes to the curbs and access to parking uh, there's also a hydro vault um, utility poles quite a lot of servicing in this back corner and so as well there really isn't much room on this site um, for parking other than in this existing location. And as I mentioned earlier, here's where the property line comes through. And currently these stalls are accessed through the, the neighborhood um, uh, property, but we're uh, unable to do that um, with, the, with, the, with our change in, in use of the property. So we did engage um, CTS, um, Creative Transportation Solutions, to do a parking study. Um, so that they basically did an inventory of nearby parking. Uh, as Greg had mentioned, there's a new, uh, the West Beach Parkade has been finished. Uh, so, you know, we were required under the current bylaw with 50 seats, which is what um, we're looking to incorporate within the tasting room, we would have to have six stalls. Um, that is based on the bylaw of one parking stall for every seats. Our proposition really is four tandem parking stalls. Two of those would be for um, Doug and staff of the of the brewery. Two more of those would be public parking stalls. Um, one thing to take note of is that while the parking bylaw in our location is one parking stall for every eight seats, just around the corner that is revised to be one parking stall for every 16 seats. Uh, we, we consider ourselves to be very close to that corner. We're 25 meter walking distance or about uh, uh, 26 seconds, I would guess. Um, so our, one of our arguments would be that you know, we really should be considered to be uh, in this one stall per 16 seat um, bylaw consideration. The OCP, as uh, Greg mentioned, um, there is notes about trying to um, really encourage pedestrian and bike activities. So uh, we're um, proposing uh, bike racks to be attached to our brewery. And we also want to recognize how close we are to the promenade and to, to Marine Drive's um, pedestrian uh, boulevard. Um, and, you know, really a, a very active kind of part, part of White Rock. We also have accessibility to major bike routes, Berg, Bergstrom Road, Oxford and Martin Street. Um, some of those roads, you have to be a pretty brave cyclist to get up. They're quite steep, but um, uh, we feel that uh, you know, um, biking to our, our, our brewery would, would make a lot of sense. Uh, public transportation, so both the bus routes 361 and 362 move very close by to our site. The, the, clear, the nearest uh, um, bus stop is one minute away. Uh, there's also in the um, summertime, a seasonal treadle, a shuttle or trolley that provides access to Waterfront Village. Uh, as we mentioned, the West Beach Parkades, which I'll show you the location in a moment, has uh, 183 vehicle stalls. Uh, pre predominantly, it seems to be uh, underutilized. So the, the median parking um, utilization is about 14.5%. There is moments of spikes in that. Um, in particular, Canada Day in the summertime, 
some of the other long weekends that we can get up to closer to 90 percent but uh, um, there have, hasn't been instance that our parking consultant found where it was 100 percent full across the street from that is the montecito parkade it also has 70 parking stalls and those have pretty long hours they're from 10 a.m to 12 p.m uh, so we see that there's a there is really a, a surplus of, of parking uh, close by to our, our project site and then finally west beach waterfront parking as i mentioned in the in the aerial photograph a uh, large number of parking stalls along there as well so this is kind of the tandem layout that we're proposing uh, to the city of white rock uh, access off of victoria avenue really the hours of operation are such that the brewing a lot of the manufacturing operations will happen in the morning before uh, the taste room is open so we see the stalls three and two really being for doug and his family and any staff to be using um, the the other two stalls parking stalls four and one would be available for public use um, if required uh, main access to this would be a new letdown um, that would, would, would allow for access across the curb and into the parking stalls here. Uh, loading space, as I mentioned, it's, it's um, Galaxy Brewing is, is a nano brewery. It's, it's not going to be requiring large trucks to access it. Predominantly, it's more like a sprinter van that's be used. Um, we'd also say that most of the beer that's being produced on site is being is being distributed through the tasting room. So there's very little in terms of um, uh, deliveries, uh, comings and goings for, for deliveries. Most of the items being delivered would be in the morning. It would be uh, uh, ingredients for the beer, hops, um, grains, that type of thing. Uh, so the, the access would be off Victoria Avenue. The sprinter van would pull in. Um, a material would be offloaded through an overhead door at the back of the site. As I mentioned, there's um, the West Beach Parkade. So this that's this one here, 183 stalls, Montecito Parkade, uh, 70 stalls. So those are the distances are very close to our front door, uh, 32 meters from West Beach, uh, 42 meters from Montecito. There's also a little bit of street parking across the street from um, uh, Galaxy as well as just right in front. We also have uh, just across the street, all of the West Beach waterfront park um, parking as well. Public transit, so this is the location of the of the, the runs. So we have routes, we have 361 and 362. And um, as I mentioned, there's a uh, bus stop one minute walk from the corner. High school net network, um, so uh, Marine Drive does have um, the ability to, to, to take um, bicycles. Um, uh, of course, the, the promenade, very important part for White Rock, is along the beach side here. Uh, we're proposing bicycle parking um, in the front of Galaxy Brewing right now. So um, a, lot of, a lot of connection to the networks down that area. Uh, this is a, a rendering. Um, I live in North Van, so I'm slightly jealous that White Rock gets a lot more of this stuff than I do. Um, so that's uh, this would be the tasting room behind here. Uh, fairly, not too much in the way of openings, a little bit of um, galaxy feeling inside. Uh, elevator lift off the front, main entrance door into the, into the brewery, bike racks, a little bit of vegetation along here, and potentially a moon rock. So as I mentioned, we're interested in this kind of idea of, a, of the 50s uh, space theme. And so we found, um, Lisa and Doug found these wonderful posters from that era of um, that kind of retro uh, space age feel to them. So we've kind of started to develop a language of interior design based on this idea. And so this is kind of a view into the tasting room, engaging a, a local muralist to do a, a, a kind of galaxy mural on the wall, windows with views to the exterior, uh, bench seating, uh, kind of this portal that you move through from the from the bar area into the tasting room. There'll be views through into the back into where the into where all the manufacturing occurs. Um, I think it's where where I'm standing in this picture is a is a fireplace. So we see this as being a pretty pretty nice place to go at the end of the day um, after a nice walk on the promenade.
And that's the end of the um, presentation. Thank you, Bill. I'm just going to, um, I'll share my screen. So we'll open up the floor now to uh, questions and comments. I see we have about nine people um, in the digital room. If uh, anyone has a question or comment that you want to ask, please um, provide that. There, you should be able to see on the top right, there's a little uh, caption bubble with a question mark in it. So if you click on that, uh, you can then uh, text in your, your question or comment, and then we're happy to kind of respond to those uh, as they come in. Uh, just while we wait for them to come in. Um, if you're not sure what you would like to say at this point, but you would like to comment either in support or non support of the project, then uh, you can see on the page there, we also have digital comment forms that are available. If you go to the City White Rock calendar, uh, you can see the, the link there. You can also just go to the whiterockcity.ca and um, at the very bottom of the screen is the city's events calendar on the main page. And you, if you click on December 10th, you'll see uh, today's event, your event details, and within there is a link to the uh, feedback form. You can also send me an email and I'm happy to put you in direct touch with the, um, with the form itself. So uh, the first question is, wouldn't the city actually benefit from a reduction in the number of free parking stalls provided? buy the brewery and instead have visitors and patrons use the underutilized city parking facility directly across the street. I can maybe start um, with a response to that. I, I, I think it's a, a good observation, a good point. I, I have to admit um, when we started looking at the utilization rates as part of the review of uh, the appropriateness of this application, um, I was quite surprised to see how underutilized the West Beach Parkade is. Uh, we did look at you know, purpose Purposefully, we looked at the data from July and August of 2019, so it was outside of the, the current window of the COVID pandemic, but it was also reflective of that peak period of use um, uh, in, this, in the summer months close to the promenade. So yeah, the utilization numbers are quite poor, and I would say that that's justification uh, to allow for more intensive use of, um, of, of the waterfront and especially the underutilized um, and vacant, in some cases, business spaces along Marine Drive and, and just around the corner in this case. Um, question maybe for uh, Doug or Bill, uh, will the venue or brewery be serving food? Um, this is Doug, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, my wife's probably the best person to answer it, but I do know enough just to uh, uh, talk to that, Jim. We will have a... Um, uh, food at the brewery. It will be uh, fairly basic in nature, mostly snacks. Um, and we also plan to have um, uh, potentially paninis. Um, what are those board? Charcuterie boards and, and things like that. I hope that uh, answers your question. Great. Thank, thanks, Doug. No problem. Uh, next question is when do you expect to open any plans to deal with COVID-19? I can take that as well. Um, we're hoping to start uh, construction sometime in January. Uh, we've talked to some local general contractors and they all seem pretty confident that this project based on the scope and size would take between three and five months for tenant improvements. Um, given that timeline, we're hopeful we can open the door sometime in May. Um, and as part of our dealing with uh, freighter health, we do have to have a COVID-19 plan in place in order to get uh, approval for our food menu. Great, thanks Doug. No problem. Now, just being mindful of time, we have about uh, 35 or so minutes. Um, if we don't get um, additional questions coming in, what we will do is we'll go back and we'll give the presentation again in the event that someone uh, might have been joining us a bit later. But uh, maybe we'll wait another minute or so to see if there are any other questions uh, amongst the audience and then we'll go back uh, 
Bill, maybe and just go through it once once more. Sounds good. What I can do, though, is I can um, control the slides if you want, just to save us jumping between screens. If you... Okay, sure. Yeah. And we can maybe just go go through. And um, those that are are joining us in the digital room here, if maybe as we go through it, if there's anything that you see that you'd like us to speak to in greater detail, or if you have questions as we get on a, a specific slide, if you wanted to offer your comment, um, we're happy to kind of just kind of take it as it relates to the slide. So uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Bill, and um, just let me know where you want me to move ahead. Okay, sounds good. Um, I had a good practice run, now, now I'll try it again. <laughs> um, so introducing uh, Doug and his family here. Uh, you know, this is a very exciting project. As I mentioned, we're looking at um, a nano brewery, a really interesting brewery. And, you know, we're quite excited about what this brings to the city of White Rock in terms of its access to, to the promenade and, and enlivening that area of the city. Um, so Doug has been, and I can attest to this, a very good home brewer for quite some time. And, um, you know, now it's the opportunity to open this, open this enterprise. So the, the building itself, it was built in 1960. Uh, has it had a long and rich history and the um, you know, really most of the modifications to the building will be on the inside and will be to do with the manufacturing process. So the addition of some more drainage, uh, upgrading of the water supply, um, modifications to the partition walls on the inside. You know, we're quite excited, excited about the design in terms of the millwork and the lighting, you know, really creating a kind of special place in the, in the city of White Rock. Um, the main kind of uh, changes to the exterior would be just really a re replacement of the overhead door and an accessibility lift to, to allow for handicap access to the project. Um, in terms of uh, interior design, we've been working a lot with Doug and Lisa in terms of, you know, a really kind of uh, fun and, and interesting interior that kind of riffs on this, this idea of galaxies. Uh, so uh, we've been working with uh, a kind of uh, almost a Jetsons type type uh, aesthetic, which we're really excited about. OK, next slide. So in terms of the context, the 1122 Vidal Street is is um, location of the project. You can see it's got um, the main part of the building and then there's a small kind of storage room off the back. Uh, main access is off of Vidal Street. Um, the the building itself is located at the corner of Victoria Avenue and Vidal Street, very, very close proximity to Marine Drive and to, to the promenade. Um, to the north, we see uh, the um, West Parkade, so quite a lot of um, public parking available at that location. And then just below that is the Montecito Parkade as well. Uh, we'd also note that there is uh, quite a lot of street parking in the area, the street parking uh, right in front of the project and also across the street. And then of course, um, all, all along um, White Rock Beach there. Okay, next slide. This is the existing building. Um, so to the right of the slide would be where the main access is to the brewery. Uh, four windows on the front elevation. Um, it's probably, actually provide quite a lot of light on the inside. Uh, there'd be uh, some landscape planting along the front and then at the back is more where the service area and the parking uh, access to parking would be. Uh, there's a, a small patio area in between the back of the boathouse and and our micro proposed microbrewery. This is the the back part of the of the building. You can see that there's an area where um, there was an overhead door when it was previously used as uh, well, our guess is an automotive um, project. 
Uh, most recently, it's been used as a fitness center with a daycare. And as part of that project, they had to put in an emergency exit door. So that's that door in between the two yellow signs that you see. Um, this slide shows the existing parking, the way it was arranged. There's four stalls kind of off the back of the project. And then there were three that run kind of parallel to it. So the, a total of seven, seven stalls altogether. In the distance there, you see the overhead door. That is, that'll be used for storage and also for the grain cracking um, a function of the brewery. And then on top of that, you can see the air handling unit that serves um, the actual brewery proper. Okay, next slide. So this is a floor plan showing the build out at full occupancy. Um, the, there was a question previously. We do have a layout that um, uh, with all the social distancing of tables and, and required, uh, we, were, we, we had a layout that worked for about 32 seats. This would be um, the full plan showing full occupancy, um, you know, once we get through this uh, COVID situation. Uh, so the main, you have the main access off of Vidal, up um, a few stairs into the main entry. Right in front of you, you would see the bar. Um, there's views through to the conditioning tanks uh, and uh, the taps would be just in front of you. Um, Doug is Doug is quite a social person, and so he'd like to talk about his beer. Um, there's three chairs that kind of access the manufacturer. So, and somebody wants to ask him a question about a particular beer type, he's available to have that conversation. Uh, we have access to um, an, an emergency exit door. You can see a little bit of the opening where, where the overhead door is. Uh, the tasting room itself would have 50 seats, two washrooms. Uh, at the end of the, of the tasting room, there's a, a fireplace that would kind of anchor the room, provide a, a focal point for it. There's a variety of seating types. So we have some low seating for handicap accessibility, as well as some kind of more social, uh, higher um, counter, or bar counter type seating. Um, so we imagine it being having access to a wide range of, of party, party types and sizes. Okay, next one. So we did condition, um, commission CTS, Creative um, Transportation Solutions, to do a parking study for, for um, in purpose of this uh, variance application. Um, you know, for as for us, for 50 seat final build out, uh, the city White Rock parking bylaw had stipulated that we would be required to have six parking stalls. That's one parking stall for every eight seat eight seats within the restaurant. Um, we would note that the same parking bylaw stipulates that for businesses along Marine Drive, the uh, parking calculation would be one, one parking stall per 16 seats. Um, for our for what we're proposing is four tandem parking stalls, two that would be primarily for, for Doug and his family and, and for staff, and two that would be for the public. Uh, as a part of that parking study, uh, CTS looked at uh, other forms of transport in the neighborhood. The OCP really is trying to um, emphasize pedestrian um, bike uh, traffic in that area. So, you know, we do see this project as being a part of that network. So we have access to bike racks, close proximity to bike routes, and also obviously um, a close proximity to the promenade and to the, and to the um, sidewalks on, on uh, Marine Drive. There's two uh, bus routes. Routes 361 and 362 to go right past um, uh, Galaxy Brewing, uh, roughly every half hour or so. Uh, seasonal, there's ac also access to a seasonal um, shuttle and trolley uh, uh, that, that uh, connects to Waterfront Village. Uh, West Beach Parkade is, the, is a new uh, parkade. Um, in general, it's not that highly utilized. So the median peak daily uh, parking utilization is 14.5%. There are some spikes that occur, particularly on sunny uh, summer long weekends. Uh, I think Canada Today had a 98.4% um, uh, parking utilization number, but in general, that would be a rare occasion to, to see it up at, at that high account. We would also note that there is two other kind of sizable parking areas, the West um, West Beach waterfront um, parking area and the Montecito Parkade, which has 70 parking stalls. Um, both of the both of the, the park, the parkades have hours that are quite 
generous, so 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, so we can provide a lot of access to, to the businesses in that area. Okay, next slide. So just a quick um, plan that shows uh, where the main entry is for our project off of Vidal Street. Um, you can see that the main access to the parking would be around the back off of Victoria Avenue. Um, parking stalls two and three would be primarily used by staff. Parking lots, uh, parking uh, uh, stalls one and four would be used for, for um, public parking uh, when the tasting room was in operation. Um, Still, maybe sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. Just so I see we have a question from Jim, and you might be able to speak to it with this slide on. So, question is, will there be an outside patio along Vidal Street? Uh, that's a great question. We would we would love to do that. Um, one one of the I think strange positive things is COVID has been realization that patios are a vital part of uh, street life. Um, you know they 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 really provide a much more ed, active edge to the street. So we would we would be looking to apply for a patio permit once we are up and running. Thanks, Bill. And another question here from Hillcrest Bakery, um, who's pretty pretty excited about the the new brewery opening opening and their <laughs> their name. Uh, will there be space for any live entertainment? Um, no, I don't believe so. Doug, do you know? I haven't really talked to you much about that. Uh, no, we have not talked too much about um, about bands or anything, Bill. Um, I really think it's pretty tight in the in the tasting area as we as it's um, currently designed. But um, you know, it's something we can certainly look at down the road. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, do you want to go to the next slide, Greg? Thanks. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is more of a nano brewery, and so we don't we're not going to anticipating much in the way of kind of large pickups or drops off, drop off in, um, in terms of large trucks. Uh, most most of the deliveries would be using a kind of uh, sprinter van um, type truck, and so we see that being uh, the loading bay being in the morning usually before the tasting room is in operation. A uh, sprinter van would just pull up alongside the building, load out the back, and there's an overhead door off of Victoria Avenue there. Um, that would be the primarily the, the loading arrangement. Next slide. So this shows a little bit of the connections to the various parking. So we have uh, the West Beach Parkade is right across the street um, along Victoria. Yep. And, 183 stalls there. Montecito Parkade, 42 meter distance, uh, pretty pretty close. Uh, 70 stalls in that parking lot. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we've got street parking uh, along by, on both sides of Vidal Street, including right in front of uh, the main entry door. And then if you are wanting to uh, head across the street, um, there's some very nice parking uh, right off the promenade, the West Beach waterfront parking. Two, two of the public transit uh, routes that run along Green Drive. So we've got the route 361 and 362. Uh, roughly a minute walk to the to the closest um, uh, bus stop. So very very close proximity to Galaxy Brewing. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know the OCP is really wanting to uh, focus on. Uh, other other modes of transit, including using your feet, and so we have good access to both um, bike paths and sidewalks along uh, Marine Drive and also along the promenade. This is a view of the main entry to the to the project, so you can see how close it is to the um, west parking lot um, behind the building. Uh, uh, there would be bike racks close to the entrance, maybe a future patio along there, and then um, the main access to the to the bar, which takes you through the tasting room on the right hand side. Uh, Bill, maybe a question for yourself or for Doug. Um, the question from Jim, is it possible to mirror the operating hours of the Boathouse restaurant to curb noise and loitering? Did you want to speak, um, perhaps Doug, to your uh, proposed hours of operation. I also have it here. I can. I can. I've got got it here too. Um, Jim, I'm not uh, familiar with the 
boathouse um, opening and closing hours. But we're proposing um, for the interior of the business opening at noon and closing at 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, opening at noon, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, closing at 11 on Friday and Saturday and Sunday at 8. We also plan on uh, closing the patio to patrons around 9 p.m. most nights. Great, thanks, Doug. No problem. Yeah, so um, a couple of last slides here. These were some of the images that um, Doug and Lisa uh, found for, for their inspiration for the, the room. And we're really excited about this as a, a it's quite it's quite fun for us as architects to have this kind of inspirational imagery. So um, we're definitely looking to have a kind of very fun, active type of interior. Uh, hopefully safe, even though it looks like that, um, that UFO could potentially be a dangerous one on the right hand side there. And then to the last, the last slide. This is a quick view of the interior of the tasting room. So seeing it as quite a kind of warm, cozy space, we are engaging a kind of local artist to do a mural on, on the main wall, uh, kind of a, um, along those, those 50s uh, galaxy kind of color palette and, and, and imagery. And then we have uh, different seats of hiding, uh, seats of heights for seating. So we've got some tall counter, kind of almost like a bar seat. We also have um, uh, long bench seating for a variety of uh, party sizes and for providing for some accessible um, seating as well. And from the, this taste room, we get views to uh, both to Vidal Street and also through into the main manufacturing area of the brewery. I think that's it. Perfect. Thanks, Bill. Um, I'm going to just uh, put on sort of a slide with next steps. Um, again, maybe we have we have some time if there are any other questions before we sort of start to wrap up. I'll, I'll start to just sort of wrap up in the next steps. And if there are any last minute questions, by all means, we'll, we'll keep the, the meeting open until 6.30. So after tonight's meeting, we'll be working with um, uh, Bill and, and Doug to um, consider all the feedback received, all the comment sheets. We'll work with Doug and his team to uh, prepare a public information meeting summary. Um, once we're through and all the sort of issues have been resolved and there really aren't um, any major technical issues that we need to address um, at this point. We would look at preparing a draft development variance permit for review by the land use and planning committee. So we present that to them uh, potentially in January of next year. Um, and we would also include a summary of our recommendation on the liquor license referral request. If the if the application, the draft uh, permit, variance permit, and um, and draft sort of resolution are supported by the Land Use and Planning Committee, we would then schedule a public meeting because there is a variance. We do have to have a public meeting, so all those owners within 100 meters of the property would be given notice of the application, um, and we would also post notice in the PSARS news. So the public meeting is the opportunity for any member of the public to speak directly to council now. Uh, with COVID, we have, uh, as of Monday this week, we've accepted that we would have any future public meetings uh, being digital in their format. So it would likely be Microsoft Teams again um, uh, with, um, with the opportunity for the public to speak either through the team software on, say, their computer, or their, their smartphone or tablet, or we're also um, looking at a phone in option as well. So following the public meeting, uh, the variance permit would be brought back to Council for a decision along with the resolution that we would then send to the Liquor and Cannabis Regulations Branch. Um, there's a question from uh, Scott uh, Keddy um, who asks, does the city have a compelling reason why a business 25 metres from Marine Drive should be required to provide two times the parking uh, that Marine Drive businesses are required to provide, especially given that there's a parkade directly across the street? 
Do we not want to have businesses like this on the waterfront? We need these kinds of businesses on the beach and should reduce the hindrances to their opening. Um, I don't disagree with your comment, Scott. I think the rationale that has been provided with this application is very strong um, with respect to its location. I don't know the, the history to why um, the parking standard on Marine Drive is 50% less than what it would be off of Marine Drive. Um, but yeah, I think in this case, unfortunately, they're the unfortunately the standards are what they are. And so the only way to kind of allow for the, the deviation from the standard is through this process. So we are trying to make it as painless as possible for the applicants. We do recognize as on, just on behalf of the city, we recognize some of the challenges with our vacant businesses along the waterfront. So I'm hopeful that we'll see this continue to proceed um, in the right direction. I think, I think we're doing all the right things. So. Appreciate the, the comment though. Um, Doug or Bill, I, I think while we wait for any last comments, this is sort of where we are. I don't know if you have any other comments or closing remarks that you'd like to offer. We still have about uh, six people in attendance. Doug, is there anything that yeah. you... Yeah. Oh, no, just basically, um, yeah, just thinking that this is a, you know, we've had um, overwhelming support from local residents um, and, and the local brewery owners in White Rock already that are already established, which has been really fantastic. Uh, we feel like this would be an uh, excellent addition to the uh, waterfront and we're you know, hoping to open a business that's respectful to neighbors, it's family friendly. Um, and we're very excited to get this uh, project started. Yeah, maybe, and maybe I could speak to um, our firm designed the first brewery that we worked on back in 2011. And it's been really interesting to watch uh, as microbreweries have become quite an integral component to, to some of the things that we were talking about in the presentation. Um, you know, walkability, certainly, you know, the, the area of what's known, come to be known as Ye East Van. Um, if you go there in the summertime, the number of people cycling from brewery to brewery, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting way to kind of create some, some activity in a place. And I think that um, this, people are particularly interested in craft these days and people who, meeting people who care deeply about what it is that they make and how they make it. And for us, it's been a really rewarding kind of industry to be a part of because the craft doesn't just kind of stop at the brewery and the beer. It also extends to, you know, working with different craftspeople in terms of millwork, in terms of uh, metalwork, uh, artists. Um, you know, I think uh, um, Doug and Lisa have a good connection to to different artists in the community. And you know, I think these things are really important in terms of becoming a foundation of, of communities. So uh, we certainly have um, really valued working on these projects. Thank you, uh, Bill, and thanks, Doug. Um, I'll just go back, I guess, as we kind of close out the meeting. Um, if there are any other last minute thoughts or questions, you can post them now or um, please do go and fill out the, the feedback form. The feedback forms are eventually presented as an attachment to a report to council. So even if you're in support of the project, I would encourage you to complete those forms so that uh, we can demonstrate the level of local support um, for the project when we present this to council. So if there are no other immediate sort of questions or comments, I'm just going to 
uh, put my microphone on mute and we'll, we'll, we'll stick around if there are any last minute comments or questions. Uh, but our participants aren't um, obviously obligated to stick around. I think what we'll do is I'll just I'll, I'll wait another minute and if, um, if there are other questions folks then we'll we'll just close the meeting. I don't think there's any point in us sitting around for 10 minutes. If there are no questions. So I just want to wrap up by saying thank you and I appreciate everyone's time and I hope you have a safe and enjoyable holiday season. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg.